Welcome back to Business Office Specialist. In today's video, we're going to be looking at charts and graphs in Google Sheets. Charts and graphs are a great way to analyze and understand our information in a very visual way. There are a lot of different kinds of charts and graphs inside of Google Sheets. We're just going to be looking at a few of the most common types today. So right here in front of me, I have some data about Facebook users and what the ages are for your Facebook users. Maybe we want to look at that and understand who our main user base is. We can look at the numbers and kind of get a good feel for where they're at, but it would be so much easier if we could see this visually to help us understand the comparison between the different age groups. So let's create a chart. To create a chart, you start by clicking on the top of the data that you're going to be working with, top left. So in this case, that's cell A3. Then you go up to insert because we will be inserting or adding a chart into our worksheet and then we'll come down and select chart. As soon as I do that, it opens a chart editor panel off to the right hand side. That's where we're going to be working to edit and customize this chart. Right at the top in the setup tab is the chart type. If I click on that, you'll see that we have the bar chart, which was recommended for us, the pie chart, the line chart, and the column chart. There are a lot more charts available, but those are the most common ones, and those are the four that we're going to be looking at. Now, in this case, I'm working with a single set of data with a single criteria, Facebook users by age. And what I'd like to do is see a comparison of the sizes of each of these groups compared to the whole. So I'm looking at their portion or percentage of the whole. Whenever you're looking at portions or percentages of a whole, the best chart for that is going to be a pie chart. So let's select the pie chart as our chart type. Now let's go in and customize a few of the features in here. So we're going to go over to the Customize tab, and you'll see that we have five different categories that we can customize in. Let's start with the chart style. Chart style is all of your aesthetics surrounding the chart. So for example, we have an, a white background behind this chart. Maybe that really glares when you're showing it on a screen in a board meeting or something. We want to tone that down a bit. I can come into my background colors and maybe make it just a light gray. We're gonna go with light gray one. Now that just tints that background a little bit and tones it down. We can also change the font styles here. So maybe I want to make this like a wide font, nice and bold like that. I could also make the chart 3D if I wanted to, give it kind of a different look or style. And I could maximize its size if I wanted to too. It minimizes the uh, legend section up here and gives you a much bigger chart. So there's some different things that you can play around with, but I like the way that uh, this one looks right here. All right, another thing that's kind of bothering me with this chart is the title. The title at the top of the chart just says numbers in millions. It doesn't really tell my viewers what exactly they're looking at. They just know they're looking at numbers. That's because it pulled that title from the top of column B here where the data came from. So instead of that title, let's go in and change it. You can change it by going to the chart and access titles. And then there's different titles that you can select from. In this case, we're going to work with the chart title. And I'm going to just delete this and put Facebook users by age. Now that gives a more useful and informative title for those viewing my chart. Now this chart's looking pretty good. I don't think there's any other customizations we'll do to this one. So let's close it by clicking the X in the upper right corner and closing out the chart editor. And the last thing I probably do with this chart is move it. You can see that it's covering the data that's driving the chart, and we don't want that. So let's click and move that. If you click once anywhere in the background, you'll highlight that chart. And then if I click and hold while I'm dragging my mouse, I can drag it out of the way until it's no longer covering the data behind it. That looks a lot better. If we wanted to resize the chart, we could also do that by grabbing any of these squares around the edges and dragging those until it fits nicely on my page. So there's my Facebook users chart. Let's look at one more chart. I'm going to come to the next worksheet. Remember the worksheet tabs are down at the bottom. And here I have users for LinkedIn by age. Now, just like before, we're going to click in the upper left corner of the table and go up to insert and insert a chart. For this one, let's do a column chart. So I'm going to go up to my chart types and change it from a bar to a column. 
And you can see that the bar and column are almost identical. The real, really the only difference between a bar and a column chart is which way the bars are going. So in a bar chart, the individual bars that show the size comparison between the different categories are going from left to right horizontally. And in a column chart, they're going from bottom to top vertically. Other than that, there's really no difference between the two. Now let's do some slight customizations to this one as well. Practice a few of the things that we learned. Let's go to the chart style and uh, change the background color. Let's do this one in a light blue, maybe a light blue three, just a really, really light blue. Now this one also has a series. The series are the individual columns inside of my column chart. Now we could have multiple columns if we had more than one type of data, but in this case we only have one data type, which is the age of the LinkedIn users. So we can change the series color for that series of columns. To do that, we'll have to close the chart style and go to the series section for editing. And again, all I have is my one series, my numbers and millions. If I had multiple different series that I wanted to uh, measure on, maybe these were by year or something like that, then you could select the one that you want up here at the top and then choose your color down here. We're going to choose a dark green to offset that light blue. And then we also have something that's called a legend. We saw the legend with the pie chart earlier. A legend, let me bring one on here, is kind of a guide to help you understand the different colors. There's really no purpose to a legend right now on this worksheet because there's only one data series. We know that these are users by age. I don't need the legend to tell me what that color represents. So I can actually go into my legend and select none to completely remove it and make sure it doesn't show up. Now I also have the data labels down here at the bottom and off to the left hand side. These data labels tell me what the specific columns and specific lines in my graph represent. I can edit those if I wanted to as well. So if I close my legend, I can go to the, either the horizontal axis, which is all of the data down here at the bottom, or the vertical axis, which is the data off here to the left hand side. Let's play with our horizontal axis. Now right now, all of our data labels are flat which is okay because they're really short, but if they were longer words, we could change them to slant so that they take up less space on my graph. So for example, I could come down to my slant labels and change it to a 60% slant, which does increase the space vertically, but squashes that space horizontally so they fit nicer inside the graph. It kind of gives it a nice look too. All right, I think that's all we have from the chart editor, so I'm going to close that again. And there is one other thing that I want to do with this chart. In our last chart, we simply clicked and dragged to leave it right here on the worksheet, which we can do. And sometimes that is ideal for how you want to view the information. But if you'd like a little bar bigger chart, what you could do as well is turn this chart into its own worksheet and have its own tab down at the bottom. To do that, once you've clicked on the chart, there will be three dots up in the upper right corner. If you click that drop down menu, there is an option to move to own sheet. As soon as I do that, it's going to create a brand new sheet with just this chart. And I can come in and rename that chart and let's call this linked in chart. And now I have the data on one tab with the chart moved to its own individual tab. So these are just a few of the basic features of how to create and edit charts and graphs that help us visualize the information that we're looking at and understand our data in a different way. Even though this chart is now on its own sheet, it's still tied back to the data inside of the LinkedIn tab, and it still is an active chart that you can edit if you want to. For example, we still haven't changed the title on this chart, so if I go up to the very top, there's a few buttons here that work with this chart page. One of them is edit chart. If I open that, it will reopen the chart editor. And then just like before, I can go to customize, chart axis and titles, and change the title. Let's call this one linked in users by age. And then if I wanted to, I could copy that chart and maybe paste that into a Google slide that I wanted to share or 
in a report in Google Docs if I wanted to share it that way as well, or publish it out to the internet so that other viewers can see it as part of an embedded website. So those are just a few of the cool things that I can do with the charts and graphs that I've created inside of Google Sheets. By all means, this isn't the entirety of the features and chart types that are available in Google Sheets. So you'll want to explore those on your own time as well. But in this short video, we've learned how to create a pie chart and a column chart, which are the two most common types of charts inside of Google Sheets, as well as many of the different editing features like changing titles and aesthetic styling, and even putting a chart on its own tab. To learn more tools and features in the Google Suite family of apps, check out more of my videos on YouTube or visit ToriNorman.com.